So let's restart and then we'll boot into our USB. Uh, so right now I'm using a USB 3 and it's plugged into a USB 2 hub because I don't have any USB 2.0 port on my system. And after restart, you have to select the UEFI part of any of your USB. For example, right now I'm using a Sandex USB. So I select UEFI Sandex Partition 1 and I press enter and we wait for system to load. So it's loaded. There is an option for boot macOS Catalina, but right now we have to go into boot macOS install from install macOS Catalina 10.15 or better. And if we go to the options, you can see the, those boot flags or boot arguments are already added. If we go to SMBIOS, I'm using the iMac Pro. And then we go back and we press enter. So the booting time of macOS Catalina into the macOS Catalina installer is very long. So it is not like any normal macOS update. So I have been doing Hackintosh from the time from the start of macOS Mavericks and no uh, installer, USB installer took as long as the macOS Catalina USB installer take. So don't worry about that. And I think there's something which Apple changed about how USB works because when we restart or when we boot into macOS or when we boot into macOS Catalina installer, there is a lot going on related to USB XHCI or USB uh, Apple support thing and stuff. So these things were never being there before this. So it's my random guess that they are working on a lot of USB stuff and a lot of USB updates and stuff. And it was not there before this. It might be due to the latest Mac OS, uh, latest Mac Pro with a lot of USBs and Thunderbolts and stuff. So now it's loading the APFS drivers. It was mounting some of the security stuff before this. And this verbose mode can give you a lot of detail how your Hackintosh is working and where you get the error. So if you want to get this mode, available for you, you have to use minus B boot argument. So you can say, you can read the last line right now is space, space man underscore trim underscore free blocks. And it's something related to trim and stuff. And HID legacy shim to it's the thingy which will stuck on if you are using a USB 3, the system will stuck there. So you can see it took a lot, a lot of time to boot and it will take even longer if you don't use the right if you don't use generic USB if you use anything else it will take even more than that so we are here into the install recovery I use Apple mouse and Apple trackpad the latest one but I don't know why the trackpad does not work into recovery but the mouse does and the keyboard also but whatever so what you have to do is you have to go disk utility you say continue and then you click on Catalina so before do you do anything you have to click here view and you have to show all devices so you can see the Catalina have two divisions in the main drive one is the data and the other one is the simple Catalina and the simple Catalina is shown whenever you f search for your main drive in finder but the other one is hidden which Apple says is what they have done is they have given the read only partition drive to the user so no one can change the basics of the Mac OS so it's completely protected from hacks and stuff so for you guys what I have to do is I will format this drive again you have to select GUID partition map you select APFS and remember I have selected the SanDisk drive so I have selected the whole drive not a single container of that file so don't do the mistake of selecting a single drive it will install the OS and it will mess up the things so I will say YouTube Catalina and we're gonna erase the whole thing again and one more thing I was confused is right now you can see Sandex 
the drive and this thing shows unmounted. So what happened is this thing went down here, the container, and here is the USB Catalina. So don't worry about this drive, it's here. And right now you can see it's just single folder and once you will install the macOS Catalina, it will make double partition of that. And the process of installation is also very, very long. We say yes, we say agree, agree, and oh, don't do the mistake. Mac OS and says YouTube Catalina. We say install, and we are up for other 11 minutes, and it went to 7, and it will probably take less than that. And after this step, there is a very important step you have to keep in mind, otherwise, your whole installation can be ruined. So stay tuned, and I'm not joking. So we have restarted and we'll go back to UFI Sendisk and we'll press enter. So after the restart, you will find two more drives. One will be named boot macOS install pre-booter from pre-boot and the other one will be boot macOS install from YouTube Catalina. So the YouTube Catalina is the drive I named our main drive for the installation and this install macOS install pre-booter from pre-boot is a software or it is an installation part which will make the recovery partition on your installer drive and it will also make the other Catalina partition of your macOS installer. So if you miss this it will ruin your installation and you won't be able to boot into macOS Catalina properly. So you don't have to boot into the macOS install from YouTube Catalina, but you have to install from here and you have to press enter and the installation will begin again. So this was the very important step you should never miss and most of the people do this mistake and this gets stuck between the installation. So we are booting and if you use the USB injector all this this thing would take years to load. So that's why I recommend you to use the generic USB. And now you can see it's installing the way a real Mac will install. It's giving you about 9 minutes remaining and it's installing the partitions of the system. So it's making that bootable recovery partition and it will also make that secure Mac OS Catalina drive which apple says it will be read only and it will help people stay away from hacks and intrusions so it will take probably quite long probably nine to ten minutes so we'll be back after this so the installation is about to end and it's two minutes away after this i will show you that the installed pre-boot from pre-booter will be changed to something called pre-booter boot to pre-boot from pre-boot or something so that will make sure that the pre-boot installation of macOS Catalina is completed and you're good to boot into the macOS Catalina itself. About a minute remaining and in any moment the system will restart. Okay so we are restarting and after the restart you again have to go to the USB Clever bootloader which you created so don't forget to press F12 when the system restarts. So we are in our boot menu and we go back to the USB SanDisk. We we'll press enter. This time story will be a little different. Okay, so now you can see it says boot file vault pre-booter from pre-boot. Then it says boot recovery from recovery. And then it says boot macOS from YouTube Catalina. And there is no boot macOS install from pre-booter. It now it says boot file vault pre-booter from pre-boot. And this thing is for my other macOS installation of Mojave, which is stable. And these three are for the Catalina. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to go to the boot macOS from YouTube Catalina and we'll press enter. And Ta-da, we are booting in. So now this time the booting will be a little faster because now we are on an SSD and the system boots way more stable this way. Okay, hard drives are mounted, APFS and function, doing some random tests and stuff. I don't know what's going on. 
So it loaded the codec commander, which saves the audio when it's the system restart, but it does not work properly on Catalina, even though it's loaded. And because I'm using all the drivers right away, all the kecks right away, so it's ready to go from the installation. So you can see my trackpad is not working, but my mouse is, and that's very different. It's going to take a lot of time here. Okay, so after a minute or more of a loading time, we are back and the system boot in the, into the dark mode and gives the China mainland as the top option. So we go down and we select United States of America. Okay, we say continue and this time I would like to transfer my data and I will skip this. So I'm going to, I'm doing this because I have some data on my previous installation and I want to get it on the Catalina so I can check for the bugs and stuff. So you don't need to do this. You can just do the normal continuation. And if you do this, it will also give you a benefit that you can test the Catalina right away. So we have booted into our macOS Catalina. I forgot to turn on the camera. So we missed the first part after that backup uh, was completed on my new macOS Catalina and right now you can see it's working perfectly fine and there are a couple of different things they came out with macOS Catalina so first is the new background which changes with the time and then we have new music Apple podcast Apple TV new system preferences also new app store so everything new is quite new. So that's all for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any question, query, comment, let me know in the comment section below. And I will try my best to answer you guys as fast as possible. Also, keep liking and sharing the videos to other friends and family. And if you want any personal help related to Hackintosh or Windows or any other software, contact me on my Patreon channel. I will try my best to help you out in every possible way. So that's all for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. Hope you enjoyed it. And until the very next video, please take care. Allah Hafiz. Thank you.